hey guys welcome to my channel it's jasmine lee here and today i'm going to talk to you guys about boundaries i'm thinking about doing a three-part video so in the first video i want to address boundaries second video i want to address how to deal with rejection as a woman and the third uh, video i want to address self-worth how to build it protect it and find it if you don't seem to have any so um, in today's video, of course, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about boundaries. I'm going to start by telling you guys my experience with having bound boundaries violated as a kid and kind of the effect that it has on me, had on me and um, just go from there. So basically, I'm someone who likes to write. I've always liked to write. That's always been a strength of mine. And when I was younger, me and my mom had gotten like a tiff over chores or something like that it's always chores you know when you're young it's always choice because your parent might want them done a certain way or at a certain time and you just doing it you'll do it you just do it when you get to it you know that's how i am so anyways um that's what we got into it over anyway I, i'm like nine or ten i go to my room i write in my journal like i feel like cinderella and you know it was really childish i'm just like i feel like cinderella and i hate it here da, 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 and like just going off on paper right private on paper that's how i was gonna vent i didn't disrespect my mom to her face or anything i just got on a piece of paper and said what i need to say and then i went and dealt with it so um my mom, I don't know if she was cleaning my room or what, but she found it, she read it. Then, not only did she read it, which is violation of boundaries, she got mad at what I wrote and went in on me, like, completely went in on me. And of course, like, back then my mom didn't have a lot of patience and I give her grace for that because she's a young, she was a young mom. Um, she was 20 when she had me, so she just, you know, emotionally a little immature still so she went out she went off on me about what I wrote and it kind of like I don't want to use traumatized as like the word because that feels heavy for what this was but in a longer sense I mean in like a long term sense I guess it was trauma because it took me forever to be able to consistently write in a journal and feel safe writing and not feel like someone like like I gotta look over my shoulder because someone's gonna read it or someone's gonna violate me in that way again. Like um, between then and now, now I'm perfectly comfortable. Like this freaking writing has literally saved me so many times from either saying things I don't need to say out loud, um, being angry and like going outward with it. Cause typically I go inward with my anger. I don't take it out on people if I can help it. So like, it just helped. And back then, for a long time, I didn't really use that as an outlet because of that one incident. And um, I would like go and journal and then I would edit myself or I would like rip pages out or, you know, just, just traumatic behavior in a way. Like just overdoing it instead of just being able to write and walk away and feel safe and feel secure in what I wrote and leave it there. I was just like paranoid. So that's one instance that that happened. Now, the way I learned how to implement boundaries was kind of fucked up. Um, basically, my ex um, felt like I didn't have structure or boundaries. And it was, it was shocking and unfortunate because the same lack of boundaries that I had um, was a, something that he benefited from. Like, if I had had the structure and the boundaries that he was asking for he wouldn't have been in my house that often there's um a lot that we just wouldn't have done within the context of how our relationship was and how our individual lives were set up at that time so it sucks because it's always a thing for me like the person who teaches me the lesson is always the person that i have to use the lesson on like with my mom you know like she was always teaching me growing up that worry and guilt are wasted emotions and so while I'm being a teenager and doing reckless things or just like doing stupid little kid stuff and possibly hurting my mom I was a little apathetic to the plight of a mom because well guilt and worry are wasted emotions so just 
knock it out don't feel it you know and that is extreme but I'm a really good student like I'm a really good student so anything you teach me I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna apply it <laughs> and it backfired for some people sometimes so this was my ex was one of those instances where it backfired um I knew exactly what he meant when he was saying he wanted to implement boundaries but even in this case like again it goes back to my mom and the way I was raised she always taught me you know go hard or go home um basically just to give it everything like don't half ass anything so i took what my ex was saying into account and i basically was like okay i hear you babe like i will do better so i go to implement boundaries and i'm just like identifying every hole in my life where i can implement these boundaries and create structure and so um there were things that he and I were doing at the time that just weren't appropriate. When you're talking about boundaries, like that just wasn't appropriate. So I tightened up in that area and um, it just unleashed World War III and it made me feel very awful, right? So um, upon our breaking up, that kind of like catapulted a lot of things and um, that was just me having to defend myself in that way like okay you want boundaries but you don't want them to apply to you you just want them to apply everywhere where you say they should apply and that's not okay um so that was an instance where i really really got to understand boundaries how they work and what they're meant for because in those moments um in the end of my relationship i had to really like stand up for myself and i really had to like draw a line in the sand like this is what you're not going to do to me this is what you're not going to say to me and of course i did that in the beginning of our relationship and i would say like like one thing for me um like a top a top non-negotiable for me is i need someone who is emotionally disciplined um i cannot do a man that's like emotionally volatile that's just not my wave um i'm not emotionally volatile so i don't expect a man to be that way with me or lack the ability to control what he says and how he carries me when he's upset like that just is a no-no for me so he knew this and he still kind of acted a certain kind of way prior to us breaking up and that was again my non-negotiable in a way your non-negotiables and your boundaries are going to be the same so it's important for you guys to know what your non-negotiables are so that you can create boundaries around that and um a standard and standards and boundaries are different um your standard is basically what like those rules for yourself of what you will and won't tolerate and then your boundary is like okay if this standard is violated this is how i'm going to respond that's that kind of thing so um i do want to say also when you're creating your boundaries you don't want to be so rigid that you are unable to bond with someone or you're unable to um just be close to someone because boundaries are great a boundary and a wall are pretty much the same thing um but you don't want to build that wall so high that someone can't peek over it and like hey up you know you don't want to you don't want to build the great wall of china you just want to build like a fence that can turn electric if you choose or it can be deactivated if you choose so um that's how you want to go about that uh when it comes to having loose boundaries or no boundaries at all um which is more um on the spectrum where i was in certain ways i have boundaries i've always had boundaries but there's just like i'm a, i'm an open-minded person and so to him who's a lot more like not close-minded but just he was a lot more rigid and structured in the way he carried himself and the way he lived his life um it's gonna seem like i just let everything slide and that wasn't the case but because that was my partner and who i thought at the time was my forever person i was willing to take it all into account and make it work so um if you have like loose or open boundaries you may um get too invested in other people's problems or allow people to get you too invested in what like they have going on like people calling you with their issues or calling it any and every hour of the day like all that um you might find it hard to say no to people um you may be like a people pleaser because you're afraid of rejection um or oversharing information with people 
And so at least when you have healthy boundaries, you're sharing information for a reason. You're not just sharing it just to share. You're not sharing it for reject uh, to avoid rejection or to be close to someone. You're just sharing it to teach a lesson. It's appropriate in the context. Um, when you have healthy boundaries, you understand who you are, what your wants and your needs are, and how to communicate that to someone effectively so that they can either abide by it or not. And if they choose not to, then you also, um, the responsibility lies with you to uphold your boundaries. Like people, honestly, people don't respect other people's boundaries. That's just a given, especially um, when it comes to dating. You can say, I'm not doing X, Y, Z, and a man will still tap dance on the line just to see how far he can get, just to see how far he could push you, um, just to see when you'll say no, if you'll say no at all, like it's that kind of thing. So um, you also want to make sure that you value your own opinions over anyone else's because that will help you implement and maintain your boundary. And then you also want to accept when others tell you no. A part of you having your boundaries is respecting other people's boundaries and not pushing that line. So we all have work to do in that regard. Um, it's just funny when as a kid you're told to um, respect space and respect boundaries and XYZ, you know, and no one really respects yours. You're told what you're gonna do. You can't say no to anything, like, especially as a black kid. I don't know if uh, kids of other races can relate, but black kids are definitely told that we can't say no. Um, anything that looks like us trying to tell someone what we don't like or what we won't do um, is all is, is viewed as disrespect. And so, of course, we don't want future youth to be so boundaried up that they um, are disrespectful or are unable to bond and, and healthily bond with people. But in the same token, we don't want them to lack boundaries to where you have all this people pleasing and seeking validation externally going on. Like you want someone who healthily knows how to validate themselves, keep themselves persevering and pushing and just keep life moving. I also want to address like the types of boundaries. I do have notes here, so if I'm looking down, I'm just referring to my phone. So there are five different types of boundaries. You have physical, sexual, emotional, financial, and um, intellectual. So your physical boundaries refer to your personal space. It is someone, you know, coming too close to you or someone touching you in a way that you do not want to be touched or touching you at all like it's all that kind of stuff or like if you say you're not a hugger and someone hugs you anyway like it's that kind of thing like you want someone to respect your physical space and back the hell up if you say so <laughs> your intellectual boundaries are the boundaries regarding your belief system and your thoughts and your opinions um those are <sighs> In that case, you just want to be respected. You can't necessarily make someone agree with you and you shouldn't. That's the beauty of life is that we all have a different mind. But they should respect you enough to say, okay, that's your opinion. And I agree to disagree or I respectfully, you know, bow out of this conversation. Because if I, you know, you just want to maintain respect when it comes to intellectual um, boundaries. You don't want to dismiss someone. You don't want to like offend someone with your thoughts and opinions and sometimes you can't control if you're going to offend them but you don't want to be dismissive of their perspective that's where the boundary comes in emotional boundaries refer to someone's feelings so you may not feel comfortable sharing everything with everybody i know that in a relationship and really it just depends on the person because i could be very open with some people and very closed off with others and it's for me, it's just dependent on the energy given. Um, it's dependent on what I notice about a person. If you seem like you talk about everybody, well, why would I tell you my business? You know, like why would I do that? So it's that kind of thing. And then you have financial. Um, your financial boundaries is just how you handle your money, what you value. Um, are you more generous with your funds? Are you a little more of a saver? Um, do you like you know to spend i spend money on trendier items do you like to thrift are you you know that kind of thing and 
it's important when you're going into a relationship because I'm just going to address it from this angle because it's on theme because Valentine's Day and all that stuff. But um, basically, like you want to talk about all these types of things with a partner prior to making them a partner. And at times you do have to take a step back from a friendship, a relationship, family members, you know, friends, whomever the case may be. You have to take a step back and be like, let me reevaluate really quickly and come back to you when I'm clear headed. Now that I've had time to think about what I want and think about like what my boundaries are, I feel more confident to just move forward with a clean slate and just start all over. So um, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope it wasn't too all over the place. And if you guys uh, catch the vibe, feel free to subscribe. Don't forget to leave comments below if you have anything to add to the, the discussion about boundaries. And um, maybe let me know a boundary that you have for yourself or a non-negotiable that you have for yourself as it pertains to friendships, physical boundaries, relationships, etc. Alright, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!